Uh, my name is Colonel Lode, and I'm uh, uh, one of the candidates of uh, Bhutan Kenyan Party. In 2018, when we had uh, the Common Forum, we had, uh, well, the four political party representatives being debated live on uh, BBS, and we had seven people in the audience. And this, it, it struck us, you know, is this really a vibrant democracy? And exactly like uh, Mrs. Ian saying that if you are to vouch for a political party, you have to be informed. And to get information is that you be allowed to at least attend some of these common forums. And it has been an embarrassment for us, sitting all the representatives sitting there with seven to eight audience when there was a seat for about 300 uh, audience. In terms of the politicalness, it boiled down to the RCAC rule. In the Constitution, the right to vote, that it is your right to vote, but it's also part of the, uh, the Constitution 7.3 to be very specific in the fundamental rights that you have the right to information. Now, if you don't have the right to information, how do we say that it's a vibrant democracy and that you are voting based on the information that you have been given? So these are a lot of the challenges the political parties we face. I think it is very fair to ask people to at least be given an opportunity to attend a meeting, and that's all. Uh, my name is Ugin. I'm from Kunsel. Um, I want to stay on the same point uh, that Kama raised in the beginning, the first question. But I would want to take it from the voters' point of view. <clears throat> so if, if you are a voter, and civil servants are actually, they are also voters. Now. So why, sh uh, why uh, should we restrict them from attending, let's say, uh, campaign meetings and ask questions to the politicians? Because I think as in the, from our experience in the last three elections, we uh, it's accused that civil servants uh, are very influential in deciding uh, whom to vote, and especially uh, in the villages where they can really influence their parents or their even communities. So in keeping that in mind, if you, if you want, uh, if you are influential, if you want to talk to your community, I think uh, they should be allowed to uh, question the uh, political parties. Why don't they attend common forum meetings? They are allowed to attend common forum meetings that ECB authorizes because we believe in those same ideals. They should be well informed, but they're not allowed to enter political party meetings. Why? Because we said civil servants must be apolitical. And for being apolitical, it's important that they are not only apolitical, but they must also seem to be apolitical. And we feel that if civil servants start attending political party meetings where there's a group of people, and it's an echo chamber, who will, of course, uh, very vociferously support whatever they believe in, but it will really, impair the ability of that individual to then function independently because now it will raise all sorts of questions in the eyes of maybe their workmates or maybe their political leadership of the day. So for these reasons, I think the design of the system is fine. And uh, I would not support ideas of civil servants, my personal opinion, and as far as the rules presently concerned also, they do not encourage that. But common forums, they are allowed to attend. And we tell civil servants also, because they raise these questions with us. I think it may even be there in our annual reports. Uh, but uh, civil servants choose not to attend. So there, of course, there's not, uh, nothing much we can do. Maybe it reflects other things. I do not know. Uh, one question you raised was, during the ele uh, uh, elections, if, for instance, governments make, I mean, the political parties make pledges. Why don't the ministries of related uh, issues, like I think the specific example is Wi-Fi, why doesn't Ministry of Information and Communication give its views? But you can see in the design of the system why that would not be a smart thing to do. Because if the, gov if the uh, civil service institutions like the ministries, while there's an election debate going on and political parties are pitching their pledges, if they begin trying to influence the voters by saying this is good, this is not good, that itself is, I think, meddling of a, a very high order which would actually not be desirable because that itself must go through processes and we have to ensure that those processes itself are again impartial. So uh, I think the design of the system, the machine part, there is really no issue, and it's more about how uh, we play. 
uh, the, the individuals, actors play within those systems. So I think the problem is really not about the systems, the machines. It's really about actors, and that's where I was saying culture does play a pl part. People don't change their behavior or their mindset overnight. I guess like every country, we should give ourselves some time. Uh, attending political party meetings, uh, this, is a, this is a challenge that we have to, at some point of time, address the normal. Because uh, while we may say political party, uh, civil servants are not, not expected to make political statements or show their likes or dislikes for political parties or candidates, but because of social media, if you do go on to the timeline on Facebook and a lot of the civil servants, uh, I think we've come to a point where while we say our civil servants are not allowed to do this or allowed to do this, there's a lot of free flow of information. In fact, a lot of our civil servants are there actually interacting, sharing information on work progress, uh, seeking input from uh, citizens, so on the positive side of it. La. Perhaps what is a little more gray is also uh, political statements also being made out by civil servants on Facebook and Twitter. La. So that's an area I think that's a very, that's a developing area that we need to look at. Uh, in terms of access to information, um, I, I think when Karma talked about informed choice, la, uh, uh, this is something the local government leaders have expressed to us when I was serving in parliament that uh, during uh, the general elections, when candidates in political parties, the presidents, vice presidents come to the constituencies for campaigns, so our local government leaders are expected to hide away and not really interact with our uh, political party personalities. There. And this, they say, puts them in a very awkward situation because they are elected, they are office bearers, but when political party party candidates do come, they're not able to actually receive them. And uh, I think the experience may not be the same everywhere, but this is something some of them actually shared. Uh, and this is similar to what uh, the representative from BKP was saying that uh, in terms of engagement, in terms of information, uh, they're not, not, not able to access all that they can. Adans, Lianchu, please keep in mind uh, one or two questions which uh, I would like to ask you to respond to. One is, how do we involve youth in politics? And I'm asking this because we all know Singapore has been very successful in getting youth involved in all the national activities, including uh, politics in this case. Then um, the in terms of, uh, okay, not allowed to attend meetings, here we have this issue. I mean, is there anything that Singapore does to uh, enable the voter how to, uh, to understand the political, we are talking, this is the uh, tension between political pledges and policies that are made. So how is that uh, refined? Yeah, I'll start with a second. Concerning uh, attendance at political meetings and so forth, in Singapore we make a distinction. Obviously, the civil servants and public servants are expected to be neutral and so on. And, and obviously, as individuals, they have every right to be informed whichever way uh, is possible. Um, as Dasha Lungton says, it is a question of political maturity. You know, over time, people become confident enough to say things that they feel very strongly about, and they are saying that as individuals, you know, in their own right. However, we make a clear distinction, just like what uh, Dasha Kama has said, you know, it's it's not okay if the civil servant uh, is actively campaigning within a political party that he or she goes to draft the, the platform for election. Uh, th this, is, this is definitely not um, something that happens. So I think with maturity, you're right, um, individual uh, civil servants will be able to make that call. Um, at the local level, I mean, for example, in schools, when you're organizing activities to draw in the community and so on, it's, 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 not, it's not normal for teachers not to be involved. The teachers are part of the civil service, it's a teaching service. So um, this brings me to your second, uh, how do you engage youth in the activities of the day? And I see there are many, many young Bhutanese on your forum today because I see a lot of college students and so on. And, and Singaporean youth, just like in Bhutan and everywhere else in the world, are very interested in environment issues and climate change issues. And today, this is, this is a, a major policy for all countries 
And it doesn't make sense not to include the public and to have you know, officials involved in providing information as well as seeking inputs uh, from the ground. So ground up, ground up inputs are more and more important in uh, policy areas like this. You know, this question has come up uh, a number of times. I've also personally come across recently students from students that apparently uh, some of the political uh, uh, meetings and all are held in schools, school campuses or whatever, and then the students and even teachers seem a little perturbed that they're not allowed. It's uh, something taking place in the school. So I guess they're not told to go and hide, but they're not uh, allowed anywhere near the meeting. So they seem to be a little uh, perturbed by that, and they're asking why, why not, and why can't they listen to what's going on? Because they, they are interested. My name is Sonam, and uh, I work in Election Commission of Bhutan. I would like to also look into the issues and concerns the ECB had with media houses as of now. Uh, sometimes uh, I believe like uh, the media houses even actually has uh, raised that ECB is kind of uh, uh, defined like untouchable kind of thing. But that's not the reality. We have our own uh, perspective why we should be silent. And at the same time, why should be so hard to, to put uh, into the matter uh, attacks? The, sometimes the challenges that we face between the ECB and then the media uh, is basically how the, uh, the interaction that we have between uh, media houses and uh, ECB at large. Sometimes it, is, uh, it depends upon how you actually approach to, to an individual, to, a, to an office. Sometimes trying to be so open with media, it backfiring on, on, to, on top of uh, things. These things are, but at the same time coming to, to the water education part and the school kids, uh, children attending. So we, uh, as an uh, institution, uh, looking after the promotion of democracy in Bhutan, we actually encourage our kids to engage in such discourse and politics and, uh, and other uh, democratic uh, process. Now, I'm giving my opinion. But I think just because civil servants don't attend uh, party meetings doesn't mean they're not well informed. Actually, from my personal experience, I know, and I'm sure you all do also, civil servants are actually probably the most well informed. But that doesn't mean they have to go and attend political party meetings. Information flows in many ways. People, as I said earlier, it takes some time. I think we have to be a little patient. Overnight, we cannot change. And, and so these are, I, I would just say, these are pangs of growing up and becoming a, a, a democracy. And I think conversations like we are holding today that the BCMD facilitates is helpful in he helping to shift norms and the underlying behaviors. Thank you. Politics does not interest you. Why? It's because you have interest in changing. You have no interest in changing a world that suits you well, it says. Does the statement resonate with you? Uh, is the outlook one should be having or sharing? Is this the outlook? Um, isn't being apolitical a class privilege? And this is a question from Mr. Shirapti. I, I share many of the, the, the sentiments that you have expressed earlier about uh, how challenging it can be for a small uh, population where everybody knows each other and so on and so forth. Um, but I think the challenge that we all face today, big or small, is the advent of social media and the possible damage it can cause with the manipulation uh, through false news and reports uh, that it can wreck. And I think we all have a responsibility, uh, young and old, uh, whether in the civil service or whether in the political arena as politicians, if we really have uh, an interest in how our country and our families and our communities are going to evolve from here on, we have to take an interest and we have to be engaged uh, this way. So this is basically how I feel about it. Thank you for having me. Thank you very me. much. Thank you very much. I live by the principle that I'm first a uh, citizen of the country, then only a journalist. So I believe that all journalists uh, have national interest as top priority. So please give us uh, information for public interest, not for the individual reporter. That does not mean that we are perfect. We are right all the time. Media, we have our own shortcomings, but we can learn together. If I file a report, my editor or my team will go through. And also we have uh, mechanisms in place also. 
so I even begin. I feel that right now the in the in these last three governments, I think we have done it professionally. We are always uh, accused of writing against the government. So I thought that we are doing our work. Zila. But then, uh, please do not recommend uh, like reprimand officials for talking to media. Please do not transfer them, or please let people talk to media freely. Zila. That's it. Yes, uh, thank you. Lo. On that la last question about being apolitical, apolitical does not mean civil servants or other apolitical institutions are not interested in politics, they are. It's just that in the discharge of their functions, we don't want their political views to influence. And I think it's this simple idea just to keep in the back of our mind, then being apolitical is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It would be terrible if whole civil service was uh, politicized. We could not imagine what sort of conversation we might have had to have. But uh, in closing, I wanted to say that the conversation we are having today is really in the context of creating a vibrant democracy. I would say that this very difficult time that we're going through the pandemic, uh, one sh uh, shining light has been the leadership of His Majesty the King, as a result of which we're in a far better situation than what would actually be normal for a country of our size in our situation. And I was thinking, since we are a democratic constitutional monarchy, maybe going forward, well, we can continue to seek the blessing of His Majesty, the King, who is eventually the head of the royal government of Bhutan. I think the royal, uh, uh, the recent royal Kashu presents a great opportunity to begin addressing some of these kind of issues. The second thing I was going to say is that maybe what we do need more of to address some of the issues we discussed is to have more independent think tanks. This is something missing. If there were independent think tanks that did very good independent research during electoral cycles where when the pledges are made, they're giving evidence to the people, just evidence for people to make better choices, that would really help with the informed choices we are talking about. And finally, I think we should continue to do more of what we're doing today, have more of this open dialogue so that we begin to shift the norms because we are all in a culture, but culture does change slowly. But if you have more of this kind of open discussions, then those norms can shift much quicker. And in that regard, I thank the organizers and also I thank everyone here. Thank you very much, Sangya. And I think the idea of trying to have the civil servants stay political or other institutions, and the idea behind this is really the end. Not uh, one can stay away f uh, from registering oneself with a political party and call oneself a political, but does that achieve the national purpose? Uh, to me, the focus should be more on achieving the purpose. While civil servants and office bearers could be forced to be a political, if the processes become politicized, the outcome would not, may not be achieved. La. And that is why, for me, uh, I always keep going back to the policy process. La. So when political parties and candidates come out and make promises, I think one thing is certain, that you want informed choices. And to assume that what political parties and candidates say is necessarily the truth may not be correct. And that is why when Tasha Karma Situn talked about uh, evidence and think tanks and commentators and critics coming in to chip in their, their version of the truth, to give the voters a more broader understanding of what may be closest to the truth, la, and therefore they make an informed choice. That is very crucial, no matter. But I think the process doesn't stop at that. We already have a planning commission which has drafted a five-year plan. La. All policies go through the policy protocol, and if it is found to be not favorable to GNH, we drop the policy. <laughs> but in reality, also, many policy decisions are made which are never filtered or which are never tested. La. So I think that process we need to focus first. La. Second, when we test the, through the policy protocol, the people who actually do the testing, uh, what seniority are they from? What kind of expertise do they bring to the table when they assess the policy, when they weigh the policy? I think that is an area that we also need to discuss. La, so that we know that we are in safe hands. The policy, not only are the civil servants and men apolitical, but the process itself is also apolitical. Thank you very much.